And now we are talking about place value and specifically tens and ones and what that means and we'll use a variety of materials to show um, the numbers. But the patterns themselves are interesting because we are using increments of 10 or 20 or decrements going in the other direction. Of course the ones will remain the same. So we could start with base 10 materials and ask them to put out the blocks to show the number 6 and then ask them to show the number 16 which is a difficult number because we say 6 first but we write the 1 first and they have to really think about what 16 really means but they'll you know they'll uh, remember they have to put a 10 there then do 26 do 36 do 46 write them down on the whiteboard in a sequence and ask the students what the difference is what is changing as we move into the next number in the pattern what do you notice what is the same what is different and with the base 10 materials they'll see of course that the ones material is unchanged as in that example there's six every time there's six ones there's six ones there's six ones but the number tens changes and how does that affect the number and talk about how we say those numbers and how we write them down using a grid a hundred board um, and you've got two options with one of these either start from zero or start from one and it will finish at 99 or 100 I don't particularly have a preference one way or the other but if you lay the numbers out in their standard locations the sequence that we're talking about here the sequences in tens and twenties will all form vertical columns of course so I've got some of these magnetic numbers and you can see quite clearly we've got 18 to sorry 8 18 28 38 all the eights are in a line because that's eight ones and just the tens are changing we could ask the students again obviously what do you notice but ask them to explain why and that's quite a challenging question because you as the teacher set up the sequence set up this quite obvious pattern but to ask the child to explain the pattern is far more conceptually challenging. So it's a good question to ask. I like that sort of question to challenge the students in their thinking. And a student who's um, up for that challenge, for whom that challenge is within their capabilities, will recognise that there are 10 in each row. And if we count along and we count up another 10, we'll end up in a vertical line. Um, it is quite challenging, but... Um, I think it's worth, as I said, challenging the students to reach that. Of course, we're looking at um, sequences of 20 as well. So we would ask a similar question and say, well, if we start at 18 and we add 20, what number will we get to? We might even count along the lines. Now, I haven't drawn the whole grid up here for the sake of time. But if we started here and went 19, 20, 21, 22 and counted up 20 it's a bit laborious but of course we find out we're directly under the 18 but two rows below why is it two rows because it's two tens and so on to further extend this we could ask the students about the numbers that are around this pattern so if these are all the numbers that we have we could say what number is here what number is there what number is there and so on and ask the students to think about the numbers in relation to each other on the 100 grid. Um, lastly we've got a number line again number lines are really useful for certain maths topics or math topics I wouldn't want to use a number line for every mathematics topic I think they can be overused and often base 10 materials or 10 frames and so on are better but for skip counting they're just um, really useful and so of course we can see a nice neat pattern neater than my drawing of tens here because of the way this number line is drawn we've actually got another pattern in between those of fives so we could perhaps say what pattern is this what is this sequence of numbers what do we know about it so we'd have 35 and 45 and 55 and 65 and so there are other questions other activities that you could do with a number line in all these examples it would be good for the students to have their own materials if possible or work in small groups with a hundred board or you know that sort of thing to really challenge the students to think for themselves and also of course to construct their understanding 
of what they're seeing. So it's not just listening to us as the teacher. It's not being given a series of instructions to follow, although that's part of it. But it, more than that, it's being asked to explain what they see and to recognize and observe and analyze and you know, basically use those higher order thinking skills even among these uh, quite young students.